Bills. Uh, we're very interested in uh, three of us, myself, Daryl LaMonica, and Ed Herster, who was our center at Notre Dame. It was, it was kind of interesting. My first contract, I called my mom, and I said, uh, Mom, I just uh, signed a contract for the Buffalo Bills for $7,000. And she said, oh, yes, it's you're rich. And I said, not only that, Mom. I said, they gave me a signing bonus. And she said, well, what's that? And I said, they give you money to sign the contract. She said, oh, my God. She said, how much? I said, $300. And so I said, what do you want? And she told me, this is a true story. So I bought her a new pair of false teeth. And then I took, uh, for 150 bucks, I took the other 150 and drove down to uh, Fort Lauderdale for spring break. Came back with about 20 bucks in my pocket. And I said, well, I'll tell you, this is it. I made it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think one of the reasons is uh, uh, we were s uh, so involved in the uh, community. In fact, I recall we used to have a Meet the Bills night where you can go to War Memorial Stadium and uh, people would come down on the field, they'd be able to have their pictures taken with the Bills. We had uh, races with some of the fans, a field goal kicking contest. There are people today who will come up to me and uh, they'll have a picture and it'll be a picture of me in my uh, uniform with this little kid and this little kid who's showing me the picture is now a grown individual and he said, uh, this is when we had Meet the Bills night, would you sign that for me? So uh, the Bills have been uh, quite a part of the community and when we played with the Buffalo Bills, you know, that your career was with the Buffalo Bills. A really a dumpy place, a hellhole. It's the only place I've ever been to when you walk off after a game, we put our helmets on because you get hit with full beer cans. This is the only place that they actually threw full beer at you, which is kind of crazy. It was nice, though, because you could, you know, you'd catch one and have one on the way to the locker room, if you, you know, if you're, you're lucky enough to grab one. By the mid-60s, the Bills roster included Captain Billy Shaw, safety George Sames, defensive tackle Tom Seastack, Receiver, Albert Dubinion. Soccer-style kicker, Pete Kogel. Well, Kemper, then tell me about how the two of them got along. They got along well. You know, Lou, it was more a, a Lou Saban situation. Lou had a, knew how to play one off against the other. You know, if Jack wasn't having a good game, he'd pull Jack out and put Daryl in and vice versa. And Jack understood that. Uh, but Jack was our leader. He had a great arm. Lou Saban uh, knew how to touch that certain thing in each and every one of his ball players that got something out of you, that got your best. I'll never forget my rookie year, I was on special teams. I was the outside man on kickoff, and in the outside man on kickoff, you have contained responsibility. In other words, you're never supposed to let anybody get outside of you. You force it to the inside so that they can make the tackle. I kicked off, and i going down, and I see the, uh, the uh, receiver coming out of the end zone. I make a beeline to make the tackle. He gets outside of me. I said, oh boy. And he goes down the sideline, they catch him from behind like on about our 20-yard line. And I'm running off the field to the sideline. And as I'm running off the field to the Bills sideline, I see Saban all the way down by the 20-yard line. He starts running down the sideline. I'm thinking, you know, what's, what's he doing? You know? And as I get to the sideline, Saban greets me and he grabs me by the shoulder pads. And he says, young man, he said, I think you're going to have a great career as a professional football player. But he said, if you ever ever let another man get outside of you on a kickoff return. It's never going to be in a Buffalo Bills unit. In 1968, age and injury relegated Buffalo to last place. It got so bad that receiver Ed Rutkowski, a former college passer, started several games at quarterback. Jack tore his knee, uh, Tom Flores uh, hurt his ankle. Uh, Benny Russell got injured, Kay Stevenson dislocated the shoulder, and uh, I was kind of the last guy, and uh, they put me in, and my claim to fame is I fumbled against Oakland. We would have knocked him out of the championship race, but had uh, we beat him that day, and if it wasn't for my fumble, uh, we would have beaten him. We got the draft rights to O.J. Simpson, so I guess that's my claim to fame. Because of my fumble against Oakland, we had the worst record in professional football, and we got the draft rights to OJ. The best all-around ball player I've ever played with in my life. I mean, this guy could do anything, everything. And unfortunately, he wanted to get paid a separate contract for, contract for everything. But he was just, uh, he, was, he had spinner's legs, the, the body of a, of, a, of, a, of a boxer. And for a guy who was 6'4", 2, 235 or 245, he had a mean streak in him. I mean, a lot of guys that are big sometimes aren't that tough or mean, but uh, we would watch films where uh, uh, a linebacker would be blitzing and Cookie would stick, step up and hit that linebacker, knock him flat in his back. I mean, he was Carlton crazy. Cookie Gilchrist went right from high school to the Canadian Football League. His personality and style of play were just as unique. I've been in football since I was in the fourth grade. Cookie Gilchrist is the best football player 
I've uh, ever seen or been associated with. I think one of the greatest fullbacks in the history of professional sports. Here was a guy that did everything. Cookie could play every position but quarterback. In fact, he wanted to get the three salaries. He wanted to play offense, and he wanted to play a defense, and he wanted to play on special teams, and he thought he had to get three separate contracts. Cookie stuck to offense, and his combination of size and speed were unmatched. Six foot two, 251 pounds, 4640. 52-inch chest, 31-inch waist. Cookie enjoyed running the ball straight ahead so that he could get to hit somebody. And he would tell you, you better get out of the way because I'm coming. It didn't matter if I was in his way or the guy I was supposed to block was in his way. You know, he was going to hit somebody. It only took one running over to convince me that I needed to block the guy in front of me and get the heck out of the way because he was tough. Gilchrist was at his toughest when his team needed him most. It came down to the final game of the season where the Bills had to go to Fenway Park and beat the Patriots. The first play of the game, Cookie ran, ran around the end, and the cornerback on that side was Chuck Shanta. And Shanta was, was going to tackle him. And Cookie had this thing. He would bring up his right arm like a hammer. And instead of Cookie trying to avoid Shanta, he ran right into him. Knocks him out cold. And the players, the other defensive guys are kind of gathered around. Cookie turns to the Boston huddle and says, which one of you mothers is next? Which one of you guys are next? Which one of you mother is next? <laughs> so right in the tank, we won the game like 32 to 7 or something like that. You know, he uh, uh, had that bout with cancer. And then uh, I was the one who had to, who had to call him uh, when uh, uh, Jack passed away. And I, I called Cookie, and uh, when I talked to him, uh, he literally uh, broke down over the phone. He said, uh, this is the saddest day in my life to hear my good friend Jack Kemp passed away, because Jack and he had a, a special relationship. Great hit on, on, on Keith Lincoln in the championship game. Oh, my gosh. Linebacker Mike Stratton changed the game in one play. You could hear that whoop all over the stadium. You could just see the the, the, the whole balloon be, be deflated. Their their best running back down the tubes. From that point on, it was all downhill for San Diego. And you know, and we were just charged up on. You could hear that thing a mile away, man. That was a cute story. Um, he left Hungary with his uh, father, who was a physician. Very wealthy family. They fled the uh, revolution, the Hungarian Revolution. Pete had this golden long hair and uh, uh, came to the uh, Buffalo Bills. And uh, usually uh, the hazing for the rookies is you, you know, give him a haircut, you know, you cut all the hair off. And, and Saban got us uh, in the room, the veterans. And uh, uh, he said to us, now, you got to understand. He said, take it easy on this kid. And he's, uh, you know, he might be a rookie, but, you know, he came over in the Hungarian Revolution. And, his president, and he walked out of the auto room. That's all he had to say. And McGuire said, give me the clippers, guys. <laughs> oh, my God. He just cut his hair up. <laughs> and I used to hold for Pete. And what a pain in the butt. I mean, you had to get the ball, put it down, tilt it back, tilt it back in a 45-degree angle, uh, turn the laces up front and on a slant. And then uh, when, when, it, when he'd miss it, he'd look at me and say, Eddie, Eddie, why, why didn't you hold it better? <laughs> <laughs> Tom Day, Tippy Day, I'll tell you. Uh, he's another one. Uh, <laughs> he, got, he got injured, and uh, this is a true story. Abe went on the field, and uh, Tom Tippy's laying there. And uh, Abe said, how, how are you doing? What, what's going on? He said, he said, I'm all right. He said, but, uh, he said hey, but how, are the, how are the fans taking it? <laughs> <laughs> He said, let me lay down like a couple more minutes, but how would the fans think? I mean, we uh, played a different area. It was a different uh, style of uh, ball, uh, different mechanics, uh, you know. So it's an entirely different ballgame. But even though we did everything ass backwards, we still won two championships. So I would never take away the accomplishments that we had. And when you compare our teams to these teams, apples and oranges, just because of the technology, uh, the nutrition, the weight programs, and things such. And when we played it with that championship, which nobody can ever take away from you.